Now, here's one of the first letters I wrote to Elner Fitzsimons in July 1769, when she went to train in Paris to be a sister with the Ursuline convent I was planning on founding here in Cork. I needed help with my schools, and I needed the Ursulines to help. Elner wished to hear all about my schools, and so I wrote the following. As you wish to have a particular account of them, I will tell you how I began. Nothing would have made me come home but that I should run great risk of salvation if I did not follow the inspiration. This made me accept a very kind invitation from my sister-in-law to go and live with her. When I arrived, I kept my designs a profound secret. I knew, if it was spoken of, I should meet with opposition on every side, particularly for my immediate family, as in all appearance they would suffer for it. I sent my maid to get a good mistress and to take in 30 poor girls. When this little school was settled, I used to steal in there in the morning. My brother thought I was in the chapel. And by degrees, I took in the children, not to make a noise about it in the beginning. In about nine months, I had 200 children. When the Catholics saw what service it did, they begged that I would set up schools at the other end of the town from those I had, for the convenience of the children. With each request, I readily complied. And the same number of children that I had were taken in. And at the death of my uncle, I supported them all at my own expense. I did not intend to take in boys, but my sister-in-law made it a point and said she would not permit any of my family to contribute to them, the schools, unless I did so. On which I got a master and took in only 40 boys. They are in a house by themselves and have no communication with the others. At present, I have two schools for boys and five for girls. I explain the catechism as well as I can in one school or other every day. And if everyone thought as little of labour as I do, they would have little merit. I often think my schools will never bring me to heaven, as I only take delight and pleasure in them. While Eleanor and three other Irish women trained in Paris, I undertook to build them a convent here in Cork. In September 1770, I tell her about the new convent I anticipate they would move into before Christmas of that year. One could not imagine in a house so lately built that the walls would be so dry as they are, nor can one judge of them till they are plastered. And when the plasterer dries immediately, it's owing to the walls being so. Had I not seen it had this effect on it, I would not have believed it. You'll find it will be very habitable this winter, which I did not think it would be. And when you are settled here, I shall be to blame if you don't get every necessity that is taught wanting, as there is nothing in my power I shan't endeavour to do. And I hope you will be so good as to excuse in the beginning all and consider we are in a country in which we cannot do as we please. By degrees, with the assistance of God, we may do a great deal. You see, though our house is the least of the order, it has in it the power to do more good than any. But there were obstacles. The sisters will not come before Christmas, and I write to Elner Fitzsimons on the 17th of December, 1770. I could have wished that, when you determined not to come this winter, not so much on my own account as on hers. I could not have avoided putting myself to some expense, and at a time when I had many calls for money and employed workmen in the short days which makes work come out vastly dear, and only, as I mentioned to you, that I was resolved not to buy what could be had in a few hours or at the furthest a few days, I should have put myself to very unnecessary expense, which I am determined not to do until you are landed. This is the day I long for. <laughs>